Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Christina. I'm a backyard gardener um, here in zone 8A in South Arkansas. And today I want to do my weekly tour of my garden and my flowers. And I think today I want to start with my flowers. So here we actually have some zinnia seeds that are coming up, our little seedlings. And then over here is our sweet alyssum. It has some bugs on it. Hmm. Wonder what those are. So we have our speed of listen coming up. All along here. Of course we have this red clover. We have red clover everywhere right now. Isn't that beautiful? Now, most people will call this a weed patch. <laughs> I call it my pollinator friendly garden. Isn't that beautiful? Yo, look at the sunset. Isn't that just gorgeous? I love those gates. My husband built those for me in that exact pattern. I wanted them in that pattern. We got our hummingbird feeder up. We got a couple hummingbirds coming every day. So yeah, today, or this is definitely clover season. Um, we have a friend who actually um, keeps up our fields in the back here. Um, and he makes, he grows hay for his cows. And so they bring in fertilizers and different things like that. And they are the ones that seeded the whole fields with the red clover. And um, so they just reseed every year. And they're beautiful and they are so good for the soil. Let's see, we don't really have anything going on over here. <clears throat> I'm not going to stop at every little thing, but let's just look at it. Here's our garlic. We don't have any scapes yet. Our butterhead lettuce is actually starting to form a head. I don't know if y'all can, yeah, can tell. It's just really small right now, but starting to form a head on that. Our spinach is getting out of control. <laughs> Our little tomatillos are kind of looking sad. They are, um, they're sun scalded. I guess I didn't harden them off well enough. But hopefully they'll pull through. Got some carrots. And I harvested a carrot the other day. I'll try to put a video of that in here for you. We have another rutabaga still left, our kale and our nasturtium. This nasturtium is still looking kind of sad. I've noticed though because this broccoli is getting pretty big and the sun of course is setting right there and those trees are right there too. It's not getting as much sun as it really needs or wants. Oh, but look in here. Y'all see that? That's a little broccoli head. Come on, little broccoli head. We don't have one in here yet. But I have noticed these spots on my broccoli and some of my other plants. I don't know what that is. I need to let me know if you know what that is. I have killed uh, multiple little caterpillars, little broccoli sprouts. I had some small little broccolis trying to live inside, so I brought them out. My, my child got that one. Look at this lettuce. Y'all, I love this lettuce right here. Is this not beautiful? It's like painted. I love that. And it's delicious. Our healthy little marigold. Beautiful marigold. <clears throat> Our potatoes are looking lovely and lush. We got all this stuff mulched. Now the potatoes do have some damage on them as well. Um, they have like little holes in them. You see that? I'm sure it's some maybe like a potato beetle or something. But I'm not seeing any actual bugs on here except for little flies. So I don't know. Well, we sowed some cucumbers here today. So hopefully we'll have cucumbers going up this trellis right here. 
Let's see, we got our marigolds, our tomatoes. This is our Cherokee purple tomatoes. They're looking all right. A little bit, a little bit curled right here. So that could be, you know, today was a really windy day, so it could be that they're just curling up um, to avoid like evaporation to keep themselves from drying out. Our dill. Hopefully, we can make some dill pickles. These are our triple L crop, triple climbing crop. And these are a potato leaf variety tomato. And you can tell the leaf looks different. Um, these are supposed to be good for canning if they like produce good sized fruits in a lot of them. But these plants to me are just not looking very good. You can see it's like yellow and I mean I know that was close to the ground but got damage on them and they just don't look healthy you know. They don't look like they're thriving. I don't know if that's me or them. We have some marigolds about to bloom right here. <clears throat> and if you don't know, marigolds are actually a great companion plant for gardening. They ward off a lot of pests. They ward off a lot of animals and they're just a great companion plant. So if you ever, ever garden and you want to do it organically without spraying a bunch of stuff on your garden which is fine if you do i guess um then you want to plant some marigolds with it all right here we have our um, green beans our green beans coming up some of them look oh that's not a green bean <laughs> look this one looks terrible i don't really know why this one looks all right this is a new soil mixture this year and they say, they say that if you want to test the compost or the soil that you're putting in your garden to get like a one gallon bucket of it and plant some beans or peas in it because they're really susceptible to the herbicides and things that could be in your um, compost in your soil. And when they sprout, they'll be like deformed looking. And some of these are deformed looking. So it kind of worries me, but some of them look, look fine. So I don't really know what we're dealing with here. We planted the um, cucumbers on this trellis as well. Hopefully they'll grow up over and be beautiful. Our purple hole peas have all come up. See these sprouts? This is a purple hole pea sprout. Now I planted some more zinnias right here. Because those did not come up, I planted a marigold seed there, planted a marigold seed there. So, we'll see. We got a really healthy marigold right there. And these are the best looking plants I have, tomato plants. These are Roma. And y'all, I kind of made a mistake. Roma tomatoes are determinate tomatoes. Now, with tomatoes, you have determinate and indeterminate. So, if you have a determinate tomato, that means that there is a determined size and production that it will grow to. So, it will grow as tall as it wants to grow. It will produce the amount of fruit it wants to produce, and then it'll die. Like, it's a determined thing. So, with a determinate tomato, you're not really supposed to prune them, and um, you're just supposed to let them grow as much as they want to grow because that's how you'll get your maximum harvest but an indeterminate tomato will be it, it's just it's indetermined how tall it will grow it will grow and grow and grow six eight feet tall just however tall you can support it you know it'll grow that tall and um so those you want to for me you know i prune those to a single stalk and when my tomatoes start getting up i'll show you how i prune them um but I, I prune them to a single stalk. So, because with our climate, you know, our humidity and the, the heat and stuff that we have down here in zone 8A, South Arkansas, um, our tomatoes will get blight and things very easily. And so I like to keep the airflow 
as maximum as possible. So, but my, what I did is that these are determinate tomatoes and I have been pruning the suckers off of these tomatoes. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I, I'm probably not supposed to do that. So I'm gonna do some research and get back to you on that. What I did was I went ahead and raked up all the topsoil in the hills where I wanted it to be. And then I've got probably three shovelfuls of uh, fresh compost on top of the hills, not really mixed in, but just on top of them. And then I covered those with mulch and we had a torrential rain last night, which is great. But I covered them with mulch because I didn't want all that running around everywhere. And then today I came out and kind of moved the mulch away on the plant on the places that I wanted to plant. So hopefully I'll put some video here of me planting this morning. In this first one we did uh, gourds we did two different types of gourds okay in this hill I did not plant yet because I'm going to transplant my little watermelon transplants probably tomorrow I don't know how well they're gonna do honestly um, this is butternut squash that one is butternut squash as well and here we have two different types of pumpkins this one over here is gonna be a blaze pumpkin and this one over here is going to be a blue bayou pumpkin. I hope this one produces because I really want to see those pretty blue pumpkins. Um, here's our sunflowers that we transplanted. Eh, I guess they're okay. They're really, really tall and really leggy. <clears throat> and it was super windy today, so I'm surprised they're still standing. I mean, like, I don't know if y'all can tell. Like, how tall those are really, really are. They're, they're really tall <laughs> but um I don't have germination yet on my okra I have this coming up and I just don't know if that's an okra plant I've never grown it before so I don't really know what it looks like I did have um, one of my children digging in this garden so I think they may have misplaced some seeds I do have this I believe that to be a sunflower sprout seedling and something ate the top off of this one that's all right not really mad about it can't blame them you know that's how God made them 
but then we have our onion bed y'all this is this is like my pride and joy right here because you know how much I how much I work on this like hardly none ever and look how beautiful these onions are <clears throat> they're just lovely and tall and lush they smell so good I mean they smell like onions I need to come in here and spoon around the dirt get the dirt around the out from around the bulb and um, fertilize them next week those are our snapdragons aren't they looking great Yeah, they're looking great. All right, let's put this back on here. I'm not sure how long I'm going to leave this netting on here. You know, I did this to prevent the cabbage moth from laying its dirty little green eggs on my onions this year. Last year, they got all up in my onions when I when I topped my onions, which I'll show you how I do that and when I do that. But when I topped my onions last year, you know, they were open at the top. They had like little holes at the top and those caterpillars just made a home themselves at home in there and chewed them all up and pooped all in there. And it was pretty disgusting, but, oh, there's one more thing I want to show y'all. Now I haven't showed this yet because I really hadn't thought about it. I kind of forgot, but I'm really excited about this and I hope y'all know what this is and if you don't I hope I can like teach you what it is because if you can find this where you live you need to take care of it it will bless you okay so this is a muscadine vine and you see it's right by our house this is where it was when we moved in we've been here for like five years five or six years and this year is the first year I've really tried to take care of it. So I pruned it. I pruned all the little twigs and all the growth. Where'd it go? Here. All the growth off, growth off of this thing. Okay. And then I've been fertilizing it. This is the one part of my garden that's not necessarily organic. I've been fertilizing it per Ison's Nursery. For like a first year vine so i did a 10 10 10 fertilizer at the on april 1st and then on april 15th i did a calcium nitrate fertilizer and all that is just like the little pellets see all these leaves right here i raked all the leaves away sprinkled the pellets on there at least two inches away from the root because if you get that calcium nitrate close to the root it will burn the root so don't don't, don't get it too close I'm going to put all the leaves back and watered it in or let, make sure it rained shortly thereafter. And look how lush and lovely this thing is. I mean, isn't that beautiful? Now, a muscadine, for those of you who don't know, is a grape. It's a wild grape. This, this is a wild vine. You can buy them um in the store that are somewhat hybrid hybridized to some degree and they have different varieties and things like that but this is a wild one and that's i love wild muscadines they're bitter they're not really great to eat um they're not really great to eat what was i going to say oh like right off the vine fresh but they make really really good jelly and that's what i'm looking forward to also quick tip these leaves have tannins in them and when you put them in um you can pickle with them so when you're making your pickles people will put pickle crisp in their jars to make to keep the cucumbers crisp during the process and everything and storing them but you can actually put a few of these muscadine leaves or any grape leaves in your jars and it releases the tannins that keeps your pickles crisp is that not awesome so that i'm i am definitely planning on doing that one of the things that I want to do this year is propagate off of either this vine or another vine that, because we have tons on our property, um, propagate a new growth and then transplant it out there. Yeah, transplant it out there and have like a muscadine vineyard. That would be great. So I wanted to thank you guys for going on the tour with me. 
hopefully um, I'll get another video up this week and um, stick around for that because it's going to have some of my top five favorite beneficial bugs in the garden. <laughs> we'll see y'all next time. Bye.